everyone knows what human means, but very few people actually know that being is a philosophical term. It doesn't mean anything to anyone except philosophers, by the way. It doesn't mean anything to sociologists. It doesn't mean anything to even psychologists, for that matter. The word being is a philosophical term. Human is merely a biological term. Yeah. So the, or anthropological term. Mm -hmm. Human is just that which is the, the flesh and the blood and the skeleton and the DNA and the, and the gray matter. And it, just as you'd study an ant, an ant or a tree or a uh, orangutan, right? Human is just that lump of flesh standing there. Mm -hmm. And the etiology, the history of how it came into being and all of this stuff from more of a physics biological point of view. Mm. Being is put there because that's meant to summarize that this is something else. It's not just an, a, a, you know, an animal or a tree or an inanimate object. Yeah. The human being, the being is a monumentally important term to, to denote the fact that the human is not a bloody machine. Mm. And, of course, we elaborate on this in the talk to no end, that why? What, what is the difference between even a machine and a human being? Mm and all that, but I don't want to get into that right now, but the fact is that that very term being is completely invisible. When you say human being, they just they ima people imagine again that we think we know what that term means, hmm. and we don't. And the first part of the talk on post-humanism is to try and explain what that actual term implies, what it means, and it's really a magical, amazing thing. Hmm. Because you start to find out that when you talk about harmony of the, of the universe, you start to discover the miracle and the perfection of what it means to be a, a human being, mm. both from the physical side and from this other uh, non-physical or spiritual side. Mm -hmm. And what is happening now is that the kind of controllers that have been controlling the world for years, they are just looking only at the human side. And therefore, that's just a, some sort of inanimate, uh, uh, corporeal entity without, not even without con not not even without spirit without consciousness listen these these uh, physicalists don't even grace us with we know that they don't grace us with spirit mm. they don't even grace us with consciousness they keep telling you that's some sort of byproduct of the brain or something <laughs> see so the people who are in control of the future here are people who have always from the time of francis bacon onwards and even before that have looked at human being as some sort of um lump of machinery this is the case for Malthus and Thomas Hobbes and, as I say, Francis Bacon, and right up to modern day, uh, even though they have many problems today that sort of blew that out of the water with the quantum science and all, but they kind of keep quiet about that. They don't want the Joe Public to know that they their, their mathematics and their science is in a complete state of disarray <laughs> because they, their theories have you know, fallen flat, but they don't want people to know that. Mm. There's only a few, isn't there? I'll be covering some of this stuff in the talk as well to show you these the theories that are of how it relates to backing up what I'm saying. But yeah, they don't want every person to know about it. <laughs> but they work upon that human level and say that that human being can be made more perfect, more um, precise, you know, uh, can maybe live longer, can function better, all of this nonsense. Mm -hmm. And we slowly, slowly buy into it. And it's not that they're necessarily going to replace us with robots. It says, I've always said, they're going to reduce what we are. Yeah. Cut, cut off the being part completely, and then dumb down the human part yeah. to the level of a robot in thinking. And the actual, what we call yeah. thinking, will be reduced to just a mere functional, robotic, uh, repetitive type of behavior. Monotonous, repetitive, and purely functional type of behavior. And this is what they do when you say, put the machines there. When you make a phone call, it's some bloody machine that's mm -hmm. talking to you. Uh, you know, it's not even a human being, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, all the accoutrements of the technological world, which taken individually aren't necessarily bad things, but mm -hmm. all together, yeah, we'll start to operate like machines ourselves, because our daily life comes in contact with machines so many times, mm -hmm. that even our language, even the way we speak, I've heard it in, in places, where even the tone of people's voices is becoming completely mechanical, including their behavior towards you. Yeah. And then, then in, in, you know, in not too distant future, you're going to be in some sort of mad Star Trek, crazy Borg world where you know you're not even getting cues from people that are even what you would register as being human. Now you hit the nail on the head there. You know this is what I, this is what I mean ab about our psychology being reduced to the Borg. You know it's not so much robots running things; it's us being the bloody robots. You know what I mean? And, well, there's that word again, being. You know. No, but, there's, uh, there's a drag factor. You, a person sitting listening to what we're saying here might think, oh, it'll never happen to me. Mm. Oh, yeah? When there's a maelstrom 
And when there is this quicksand that the whole world is becoming, you may not have a choice. The only way that you're going to uh, get out of this, the only way that you can guarantee that this won't happen to you, is to continue being what a being is. You can't stay static and say, that'll never happen to me. The drag factor alone will drag you down. You have no choice. You Therefore, it is an active, it's an activity that you have to do. You have to investigate what being is. You've got to work on the other side. You've got to not only deconstruct the negative pollution that's coming in to infect your mind and the mind of the people you love, but you also have to do some active work as well. That means get in touch with what it is to be a being. And this is what not a lot of people are doing. They take a lot of sidetracks. Or they ask some guru to tell them or some new age, you know, sort of uh, approach. But that's totally in the early stages. One has to go much, much further to discover and ultimately they have to do it. They actually have to do it, the homework themselves, to deepen what it means to be a being so that yeah. you have such tremendous immunity that there is no question of these people ever disempowering you or, or fooling with your mind or, or testing you and then you wavering and falling because you will otherwise. These people are extremely smart. They're very powerful and they've controlled, they've controlled the human mind for thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. Thousands through religion, through monarchy and through whatever else. We are now in a, in a period of time where we even have the so-called freedom or the liberty to actually get clued in on this. Mm. But the thing is that, you know, I'm never going to Stop talking about this. That people have to continue the process. We are in the beginning stages, beginning of it all, the beginning stages of even understanding what's happening on this planet. But there's further to go, and people, the serious ones. I know there's a lot of people, and even in this movement, they're not in the slightest bit serious. Remember that four-part thing I said that it's about not just asking the question, it's having the guts to accept the answers. It's uh, zero tolerance for the lie. Yeah, yeah. You know? and, and, and what was the third one? That you'll pay any price to gain the truth, gain the knowledge. Yeah, yeah. So asking the question, yeah, okay, everybody can do that, and a lot of people have been doing it. But there's three other sub-categories. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the people who are into my work, they are into those three categories. Zero tolerance for the lie, uh, have the guts to accept the answers when they hear them, and will take no, nothing but the answer, meaning that they'll pay the, they will pay the price for the answers. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you find when you, when you get into that, that kind of area of thought that you actually start to experience the, um, the potential of being, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. you know, you can easily fizzle out this fear and uh, shed this deprogramming if you're willing to, as you say, walk the Siddhartha road, Michael, you know. And have a no-nonsense approach. Exactly. You've got to be able to go the distance to get the answer. Sweat it out. The, the, to, find, to find these answers, as I know from my own personal life and from all my colleagues who work in this field, it's a tremendous uh, discovery. It's a, it's a, it's a journey of, of adventure, and it, it really is going to cost you a lot of sweat and blood. I, I'm not going to fool people and pretend that it's easy, and I'm very skeptical of easy answers because those may be all right for the collective or for the world or for society, but the individual who has got to look into the mirror of the self that becomes much more difficult. Mm -hmm. But you see, until the person has had the ability to change themselves fundamentally, they're in no position to change anyone else. It's just mm -hmm. that's the law.